We're in the far west of Ukraine, close to the border with Hungary and Slovakia. One of the greatest concentrations of Ukraine's Roma population lives here in the Transcarpathia region, most in extreme poverty. Jobs are scarce. But many Roma who moved away to cities in search of employment are now returning to these villages. A series of anti-Roma attacks by far-right extremists has presented these people with a stark choice, work or safety. This is how it all began. In April, a far-right group attacked a Roma camp in the Ukrainian capital, Kiev, as this footage is said to show. It wasn't to be the last such incident. Copycat attacks have followed. In late June, the violence claimed its first life. 23-year-old David Pop was stabbed more than a dozen times in the western city of Lviv. His death provoked an outcry, forcing Ukraine's politicians to break their silence and react. The teenage suspects are now in custody. But how could this have been allowed to happen? And what's happened to the survivors? It was here, in the village of Barkasovo in Transcarpathia, that David Pop grew up. Since the attacks, people here have become wary of strangers. It's only thanks to the mediation of pastor and village elder Fedir Varga that we're allowed in. He takes us to meet David Pop's widow, Iboya. It's the first time she's spoken publicly about her husband's murder. When those teenagers came to attack our camp, they didn't say a word. They just started going at us with their knives. I begged them, there are children here. But they just started attacking us even more viciously. My husband was lying dead in front of me. After that, I lost consciousness. On the day of our visit, Iboya received a call from the police in Lviv, asking her to testify in court. She refused out of fear. Are Ukraine's politicians really taking this problem seriously? We asked the deputy governor of Transcarpathia in the region's capital, Uzhorod. While this part of Ukraine has not seen any attacks so far, its Roma inhabitants are worried. Yaroslav Galas is devastating in his criticism of the police in Kiev and Lviv. If the police had cracked down hard on this after the first attacks, we would definitely not have seen the murder in Lviv. When something like this happens, it's up to the police and politicians to come down hard and send a message to society that things of this kind will not be allowed to happen. Since the attacks, police have responded to requests from community leaders to step up their patrols in Roma districts. Miroslav Horvat is a Roma community leader and local councillor. Very few Roma hold elected office. He uses the position to bridge the gaps between government and his own community. Many Roma here don't even have a birth certificate, let alone a passport. He's often the only one who can help. But recently, Miroslav has been confronted with a new set of problems as victims of the attacks come to him for support. I don't understand where this hatred comes from. We've never seen anything like it, this kind of open discrimination, these kinds of attacks. We need to get around to solving the Roma community's problems now and not just kick the can down the road. Miroslav takes us on a visit to Radvanka, a Roma community on the edge of Uzhorod. We meet Clara, a survivor of one of the attacks in Lviv. They beat old people and children. They smashed my brother-in-law's head in and just left him for dead. But I don't want the attackers to go to prison. Prison doesn't make people any better. They were just kids after all. That's something we hear time and again. But it's unclear if people are too afraid to say anything else. Then the mood turns. There's been a break-in at a local church. Police are quick to suspect Roma involvement. If it was them, they'll give it all back. Someone broke into the church. Do you have pictures? We never find out how the investigation ends. For now, the police leave Radvanka without making any arrests. These people need the police to protect them but relations with law enforcement are tense and marred by suspicion. There's so much negativity about Roma, especially online. 
If something gets stolen or anything bad happens, people always just rush to assume it was Roma. That's not right. We urgently need the state to protect us, especially now. There are groups out there that attack Roma, and we can't be sure that someday the violence won't reach us here in Uzhorod.